Hello, hello. Pop up TikTok live because it's a snow day, at least where I am. Now, I know I have a TikTok live. Oh, excuse me. I know I have a TikTok live scheduled for this evening. I will totally do that one. But I just thought it would be fun because if it isn't fun, I'm not going to do it. I just thought it would be fun to show up and do an unannounced TikTok live when you too might be sipping your cup of tea, looking out at a snowstorm. I'm on the East Coast of the United States, so that's what we got going on here. Um, and I, yeah, surprise German maid. Yep, I like to surprise people in a good way. I like to delight people and hopefully this and maybe the next hour or so together um, will be a delight. Good morning, Dana. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tamara and Nick and Elaine and all the little people in puppet land. Um, yeah, we have a snow day today. Now, the funny thing is for me, I work for myself and I work from home. So it isn't really different for me. I will still be coaching people on Zoom. I will still be doing um, coaching consultations on Zoom. However, I am also a person who grew up as a kid in New England. I mean, we are literally within the... Um, the range of time that the blizzard of 78, if anybody remembers that, the blizzard of 78 was a big deal. So I, until the day I die, I will always know that a snow day has a different energy than other days. And I love the energy of a snow day. And it allows you, it messes, it, I don't say it messes up. Excuse me, let me just readjust here. I thought it'd be fun to kind of show you two rooms at the same time. Um, uh, a snow day reminds you that not all days have to be the same, the same, the same, like you're in a, in a factory. I love it when things remind us of our humanity and the, our interplay with the world and weather and how regardless of how the um, you know capitalist society we live in wants to treat us like cogs in a machine or ghosts in a machine, that we are spirits in the material world. <laughs> there we go. Oh, talk about some Gen X references right there, huh? All right, so Carrie is saying we got snow in Memphis last night, didn't stick. Boy, we've got a, I, even some, from the time I got up and coached this morning, looking out the windows, it has changed and accumulated like nobody's business. I know my uh, my family up in Massachusetts is probably gonna hit, get hit with about a foot of snow. And boy, did I pick the right time to get up there and get out, right? Um, Cindy says, I'm moving and keep hoping magically everything will be packed up and ready to go. Cindy, seriously, when you when you find that magic, those little elves, please let me know. I will totally hire them. Um, yeah, we can hope for magic, but you know what's even more fun is, well, it's all, all more powerful, I guess, or whatever the word is, is do it, knowing you can do it yourself. Knowing if you want magic to happen, you can make the magic happen and do it yourself. Um, uh, Carrie saying, I lived in Andover, blizzard, the buzzard of 78. I love it. I know it was a miss, a mistype, but I love that. Yeah. The blizzard of 78. I was in Needham, Massachusetts on 128. The, the cars stopped. People got out. They went up to St. Bart's and had sandwiches in the community room. Um, it, I, I had like, it felt like a decade and a half off from school today. Won't be like that, but it's a different energy. So I decided to show up. All right. Okay. Uh, Daniel Z58 says, moving was so stressful. Moving is one of those things that they say is one of the more stressful things in a human's life. So you're not alone there. Um, uh, I never want to go again. Yeah, sometimes it may want you to do that, but it was a good time to purge though. And you donated a lot. Remembering that, rem that might remind you the next time you think you're going to bring something into your house, whether you want to move it again. Okay. Um, uh, no fun. German made 95. North Carolina got 24 inches one year. I was snowed in for over two weeks with no electricity, little snow equipment. Unfun. We just saw a neighbor. Um, he lives in an apartment complex and he probably doesn't have a shovel of his own. I think he was using his like um, car scraper to like make a little path. We've got shovels like nobody's business. Um, all right. See, we've got snow in Kentucky. So yes, in case we haven't met before, before I kind of jump into things, I always like to be polite and introduce myself. Many of you, I see some familiar for names here, um, but for those of you who are just kind of scrolling by on a, on a snow day, or maybe it's not snowing where you are, my name is Beth. I am a decluttering life coach, and my, my coaching and my TikTok page are called Destination Decluttered. 
Now, why do I call it destination decluttered? Because boy, oh boy, RD, did I find the difference in approaching my life and also decluttering changed for the better and made it so much more simple and easy when I started to think of it as a road trip to have fun moving towards a destination that you're excited to get to versus a commute that you're drudgerily going on to, you know? Um, I do this by doing TikTok Lives. Um, today I have this one. I totally popped up and did this one. I have another one scheduled for this evening at 7 p.m. Eastern. I will also be doing that. That will be most likely through my office. When I do a, a pop-up TikTok, I always think it's fun to do it from a different room in my house just to mix up the backgrounds because I spend so much time in my office and you know if I'm going to do a pop-up it's because I felt like doing it and sometimes I love my office don't get me wrong except for calling it an office I don't like calling it an office but the room I do most of my work in I love it but sometimes it's good to get out of it okay so I show up for you I also yeah just really quick I, I forgot I kind of I often distract myself um TikTok lives and recording videos and also, um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, paid coaching, and I have a free membership, a free email list that I do a free monthly Zoom call with, with a group of people. So if you're interested in any of that, the link's on my, um, on my uh, TikTok page. But in the meantime, I'm here for you for like the next hour. Um, and uh, thank you. Oh, hey, Erin. Nice to see you. I hope really you're not getting the snow up in Buffalo like we have down here in PA and in Mass. And Erin is saying, for those of you who are listening to a recording, when this is uploaded to, um, uh, what is it, YouTube, which reminds me, I have some to up update to YouTube. Got to do that today. Your walls are so beautiful and make me so happy. You know what? I will be honest with you. They make me happy too, even on a snowy day like this. What I realize a lot about living in a place that has four seasons is the winter looks nice when it's all white and snowy. It looks very nice outside. It's going to be not so nice sooner or later. Ooh some uh oh gosh some uh snow just fell off of a neighbor's um uh electricity line we'll have to keep an eye on her um but i like it when i can walk around my house and no matter what the weather is outside it's cheery it cheers me up and so i have designed my life and my home around things that i look at that make me happy and i want to offer that to you too maybe you're looking at stuff right now that doesn't make you look happy maybe you look at something and you go ugh I have to deal with that and morning um and i'm here to help you with that stuff because i can help that you know um <laughs> mm. all right uh i love it um moving is empowering to me because you're forced to clean out everything yes that's a good thing that is a good thing yes um getting distracted and refocusing yourself that is a good habit to practice and get stronger at now, those of us and those of you, and I'm looking at my husband kind of, and I wonder if he thinks he has ADHD or not. <laughs> I have it in my family, so I know I've got a, uh, probably a, a gene for it. But what I want to suggest to you is just this thought that working with the way your brain works, your eyes work. My eyes get happy when they see, they send a good, when I see cheery colors like this. Okay. And, um... I am here to encourage you to find out how your brain works with your um, and how that is resulting in the in the results that you have in your life. Now, I tend to do this decluttering as a life coach because I'm a certified life coach. So I always bring in the kind of the holistic approach about how things feel and how you think about stuff versus just how they look. Because looking good is only half the battle. You gotta get, you gotta see what's going on inside, and I mean that in human terms, as far as people that look nice on the outside, but maybe jerks on the inside. But also in your house, it can look good on the surface, but you, maybe you don't want to open up a door or a drawer because you've got stuff in there. Okay, I help you with that. I have learned through trial and error. Um, grew up in a cluttered household. Many of you saw my irate. Um, anger at the people who are sending my mother too much mail because my mother still lives in that house that I grew up in. Now, she is a cluttered person. She tries her best. She's brilliant at so many things, but she also struggles with clutter. I have learned how to be decluttered because I got out of that situation and I experimented with different things. And I'm here to just give you some shortcuts to help you with that, okay? Um, much like I, you know, I went up and helped her with that. I'm not gonna, it, what is that? If I can't change your mind, then no one will. Sugar, Husker Du, anybody, Gen X. Um, 
I can't change anybody's mind, but I can offer ideas that you can kind of swirl around in your own head and see if that lands a certain way, if it resonates, and hopefully it helps. So that's why I'm here for. So let's congratulate some people. So Kelly from Arkansas is saying, I just cleaned out a closet of seven boxes of clothes that don't fit anymore. Rock on, lady. See this? I'm giving you a, a Liz Lemon high five. I've got my hands around my warm cup of tea because my hands are always cold and I like to sip my tea. My nieces and nephews make fun of me. They're like, oh, Auntie Beth does this. Ooh. Congratulations on cleaning out a closet of seven boxes of clothing that doesn't fit anymore. Liz Lemon high five right there. Um, oh, notice this. What's the best way to figure out that ADHD brain thing that's working for you? See the results you get in your life. Work with your brain. Don't fight against it. Your brain is going to brain. Your brain is going to do what it does. You can change it. You can change your habits, but change them in a way that is working with how you naturally think. But also, I will say this, getting focused and distracted, practicing, be doing the practicing, honoring the distraction and, and getting better at being focused on things is a good habit. Um, if you want to find out if you have ADHD, I'm sure there are places that actually will diagnose you about that. And then you can better know how to deal with it. Okay, now, Tammy, this is really interesting. I'm like, hey, Sally. Tammy is saying, my issue is if, I, if it can't be perfect, then why bother? Notice that is an attitude. It is an attitude. It is a thought in your head that makes you feel a certain way. And when you feel a certain way, you do a certain thing. When you're saying, if it's not perfect, I'm not going to do it. It's like, yeah, if it's not perfect, why bother? And then you're not moving things with your hands. There's a disconnect. When all these things are running together, this is the flow you want to be into. But I want you to think of this. Notice that your attitude, your feeling about it is based on this unhelpful thought, basically, of if it isn't perfect, why bother? Nothing is perfect. There are religions that say don't make anything perfect because the only thing that's perfect is the deity and the deity is not perfect. Nothing is perfect. Lower your expectations and you'll get some movement. My house, I love my house. There is so much right about it, but it is, is it perfect? No, but it's, I am happy with where it's at. Resetting your attitude, your thoughts, and your, and your attitude will most likely get you starting to do something. If you say it's never going to be perfect, but I'm going to make it better, I'm all about better. If it isn't how you want it now, how can you make it even incrementally better? Try that, Tammy. Try on that hat for size. See how it fits. See how just putting different thoughts in your head makes you feel a different way. When you feel different, you might do different. Okay. Guinevere's talking about getting overwhelmed. Um, overwhelm. The number one thing that people talk about with decluttering. Here's a tip I can help you with. Is think of the opposite. Everybody, Erin knows. I coach with her. Other people know. I've said this before. Erin is saying four kitchen chairs left the basement yesterday. Went to the curb. Right there. High five. High ten, I guess. Rock on, lady. And um, notice. I'm all about the notice. If you start a jar and you put quarters in it, every time I say notice or chunk it down or the, even just the word down, you're going to be, well, you're not going to be rich because it's your money anyway, but you'll notice that. Ha <laughs> ha, see what I just did? Notice it. Overwhelm. It means that your brain and your nervous system are overloaded, overwhelmed, paralyzed. Think of the opposite of the word over. Even just start with the, the English lesson. Word over. The opposite in my coaching is down. So instead of looking over your head, above, I'm in over my head, it's overwhelming. Look down. Say, I got this. I can breathe down. I can slow down. I can quiet down. I can calm down my nervous system. I can slow down the way I move. When I slow down all these other things, it interacts with my vagus nerve and not your last vagus nerve, but I call it that anyway because I like to have fun. When you quiet down and slow down, suddenly you're not overwhelmed anymore. When you feel better in your body, in your nervous system, in your, in, in your insides and in your head, then you can chunk down 
you can write down things. You can say, instead of looking at all of it, I'm going to look at some of it. And I'm going to, I'm going to write down all this stuff. And then I'm going to pick out some chunks and say, okay, of this stuff that I know I want to do, I have to do, how can I get started? Start with the small stuff, one step in front of the other. Okay. So notice everybody, even right now, me, I'm not overwhelmed, but even me displaying how to decrease, how to feel better, makes me feel better. And I wasn't feeling overwhelmed to begin with. So try that, experiment with it. Some simple free, free things you can do everywhere. In your house, with a mouse, in your car, driving far. Listen to me, I'm like Dr. Seuss for crying out loud. When you feel better, you're gonna do better. You're gonna, instead of being stuck and overwhelmed and frozen, you might do something and take action, okay? There we go. And the how, once you relax your brain, once you feel better and your brain's like feeling things are doable, you have a lot of good ideas. You've got the ideas, you've got the music in you. <laughs> you have ideas that will come to you when your brain is not clamped up saying, I don't know what to do it. What if you did know? What are some things? I know you're no, no dumb bunny and bunnies aren't even dumb. You know what to do in certain situations. Now, all of them know. That's why we get coaching. That's why we get training. That's why we go to schools to learn what we don't know. But you can learn things and do things differently. Okay? I love it. <laughs> I love seeing the interplay between people in here. That's awesome. So very cool. Yeah, do that light in a mood. Notice that your mood, your mood is a feeling. When it's heavy, you want to lighten the mood. Why do you think I show up cracking jokes like I'm on vaudeville? and you know broadway and all that because when you feel better when you're lighter and airier it opens you up like a sponge you're not all clamped down like an armadillo but you're open to you're open to letting your thoughts flow ideas to come in inspiration to hit and you can do something okay um lola is saying i've been decluttering all last year rock on and this year i want to do so much more good i hope you've made progress with your decluttering Okay, and I want you to think of what more do you want to do? Where are you now and what do you want to see different? Get specific about it. The more specific you are, the more you, it's easier for you to know what to do when you show up and also the universe can help you with that. Okay, um, so just think about that and make a plan. Okay, um, Sway Mommy is asking how to get a spouse to stop saving everything. I have no idea how to get a spouse to, <laughs> I kid, my spouse, I am, I am lucky. I have an awesome spouse <laughs> that is, is really good about knowing, seeing the value of and feeling the value of decluttering. You may have seen one of the videos. One of the highest watched videos on my thing is literally me following him around as he was ready to declutter some of his stuff and we gave some, I gave him some pointers to make it easier. The neat thing is, is we learned from that one. I'm going to do another video this week um, because there's some more time that we want to do it. But because we started it last week, this week's decluttering is going to be easier. The one thing I will get um, curious about Sway Mommy before I hit, because Dana's got some news here too. <laughs> I say it with a smile. Yeah, with Aaron, you know. he. It's, it's, com it's comedic effect. That's how we work here. Um, ooh. Hey, hey, let's not lose the the lights here, all right? There, snowstorm. I'm yelling at the snowstorm because our lights are flickering and I would prefer not to lose the electricity. That will, um, well, that will cause me to change my plan for the day. All right, thank you. All right, no, please feel free not to go off. Okay, I can't control the lights, but what I can do is make the most of the time we have together, even though it may look like I'm in a disco, okay? Um, what I want to suggest is, Notice that your thinking, your brain is saying your spouse saves everything. Notice your very dramatic words. Your spouse probably doesn't save everything. Your spouse probably saves more things than you would save and different things than you would save. It's a lack, it's a, it's a, it's a misalignment of expectations. So get curious, show up in love in the spirit of love with your spouse, ask them, not judgy, same words, different different energy, judgy versus curiosity and love. Why are you saving this? Versus, 
Why are you saving this? Open it up to hearing the answer. Is that our thing here? You know what? Can you turn that down? Yeah, thank you. All right, it's a little bit darker. Okay, I think that's because it's on the, the dimmer. Yeah. Phew, okay. Hope nobody, had, hope nobody had like an epileptic seizure right there. I think it was, it was a, a con, we got to figure it out. This is how we roll on live TV from our own houses, okay? But just notice, show up in love and curiosity with your, um, your spouse and have a conversation. Get curious why they are saving it. And listen for the answer and, you know, have a conversation about, well, it would feel better if we had less stuff in the house. Start the conversation, but please not from the side of judgment. On the other hand, the opposite, the opposite of judgment is gonna be love, is curiosity. Do that, and that will get you better. Now, Dana is saying, at least 15 bags of trash gone in two weeks. Yes. No, Dana, don't look around and feel defeated by what remains. No, practice reframing the opposite. Instead of looking at what all the stuff you still have to do, revel in what you did do, luxuriate, Congratulate yourself. Build up that energy of, look what I did so far. Look at how far I have come. And the stuff ahead of me, because I did the stuff behind me, I know I can do this stuff ahead of me. Do not allow yourself to become defeated by what remains. Encourage yourself. Reframe, refocus on the stuff that makes you feel better because when you feel better, you're gonna do better, right? And intraday sun is cheering you on. All sorts of things like that, okay? There we go. Yeah, just Michelle is saying something else I learned is put it put it away, don't put it down. Because if you have ADHD, you'll probably forget. It's true. The sooner you can do the thing, the less time you need to spend remembering it. Okay? All right, here we go. Now we got some good stuff here. Um, how to get back in the grove. I know, Patty, you mean the groove. I get it. But you can go in the, the um, you just walk out into it. Okay, pretty Patty, start small. Start small, just get back into it. You know, if you've been depressed lately, notice your depression and how when you don't feel good, you're not gonna do good. So what can you do before just jumping back into the decluttering? Check in with yourself. Why are you feeling depressed? Now you don't need to figure out all these things before you start to take action, but take them into account. Is it something I can work on? What can I do to make myself feel better? And when I feel better, I do better. And sometimes it can be the flip. Maybe make one thing I can do to make myself feel better is to just get up and start again. Come on, baby. Let's start again. Okay? When you feel better, you're going to do better. And sometimes it's like, you know what? I'm going to treat myself kindly. I'm going to do a little bit today, and I'm going to be excited about what I did do and not beat myself up about what I didn't do. All right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Ha-ha. <laughs> Erin is standing in business. You gave away your chairs. Ha-ha-ha. <laughs> Yeah, and also, I love it. Somebody mentioned the depressing season we're in. Yeah, just Michelle. Yeah, we are human beings. We are animals, and we respond to our environments. And I will tell you this. I feel like I'm like, I'm little Edie. I'm telling you, is I know this, that I feel better and do better when my body is not cold and when my eyes and see color. I know that sounds very minimal. However, I live in an environment that for months out of the year, I have to do things to make sure my body feels the right temperature for me. I have to do things like paint the walls cheery colors so that in the times where it's pretty much a black and white movie out there, especially with the snow, that my, my eyes can look at cheery colors and feel better. So notice what makes you feel depressed and what can you do to change some of it? Now, some of it may be out of your control, kind of like on the surface. Maybe it is a chemical imbalance. Maybe that means go to the doctor, get your depression managed chemically. There's no shame in that. But find out what doesn't work for you and you can do the flip. Okay? So yeah, but you're not alone in this. This is a hard time for everybody. This is why when I got up this morning and I saw that it was snowing out, I know that this is the really good time of year to hunker down in your house and do your decluttering. Because when the weather is nice, you probably don't wanna be forcing yourself down the basement or in the attic or cleaning out that guest room that's now become a storage room. You wanna go out and play. You wanna be able to enjoy the weather. 
So use this time now to set yourself up for a better, more free looking season in the spring and summer. Now, can you tell that I am totally coming from a East Coast, Northeast United States perspective about the seasons and how the weather makes you feel? You may live in a different place, but notice how external factors can make you feel. And if they're not making you feel good, you can do stuff about it. I love it. Lori Hanna, who I know lives in a place that is not cold and snowy in the winter because I'm going to be in her area in just a few weeks and I'm going there because it's warm. Lori is one of my clients and she just wrote, learned to chunk it down with Beth and finally making progress in the last six months. Yeah, for decades of, of, of accumulated clutter, we are making awesome progress. Chunking it down. Now, I did not invent that word, that phrase. I got it from a coach I had, a book I read. But man, did that help me to say, if I'm looking at it too big, no, like a road trip. I don't know how to drive from here to Palm Springs. I'm flying there. But what can I do today to get closer to where I want to go to? Okay. So, um, okay. Liberty Lynn is saying, I'm too sentimental to get rid of stuff. It gives me anxiety. Chunk down your stuff into three categories. Categories. Surface clutter. That's not sentimental. Stored clutter that's not sentimental, and then your stored clutter. Excuse me, your sentimental clutter. Surface, stored, sentimental. Now the interesting thing is the sentimental stuff can be any one of those two places. It can be stored away or it can be on the surface, but the sentimental stuff is the stuff that tells you a story. Notice that you get anxiety. You, you feel an anxious feeling in your body when you tell yourself a story about getting rid of something that tells you a story and that that gets you not feeling good. It happens to many of us. Many of us are struggling or not struggling. Many of us are sentimental. It begins with an S. Many of us are sentimental. Sentimental. Sentient. I'm sure there's a Latin derivation of how these things make you feel. How about this, Liberty Lynn? How about, like I coach, do not start with the sentimental stuff first. Practice removing the things, practice decluttering on the easy things, the stuff that doesn't hold a strong emotional pull. I'm looking right now and I see that, you know, somebody gave me over the weekend, I ran out of bags and a friend gave me, I just wanted like a, you know, a, a paper bag, but she gave me a recyclable bag to put my stuff in because I was coming home from my mother's house with more things than I showed up with. Now that bag, I'm like, okay, I don't really have an emotional attachment with it. Granted, it does say Downton Abbey on it, so I might save it, but I can easily put some donations in that bag and um, remove it. However, if it ended up being, oh, here's your school bag from 1975 that my mother had saved, that has an emotional pull. I may think about it differently. Start small and start with the things that don't activate your nervous system into an anxious state. That practice will allow you to feel safe getting rid of things so that when it comes to the sentimental things, it will be easier. Okay? Yeah. Notice that with everybody. All right. Becky is going to do some decluttering today. Rock on. It's one of the reasons I showed up and I've been here half an hour already. This is crazy. Top of the hour, I will reintroduce myself for the new folks. I will also suggest that if you've hung around for a little bit and heard me and we haven't met before, I'm Beth, Destination Declutter, Decluttering Life Coach here on TikTok. Um, please consider following my, my TikTok page. I say that because I do schedule to TikTok lives. There's a schedule um, that's on the top of my page that's pinned there. Today, right now, is a pop-up. I didn't plan on doing this, but since it's a snow day where I am, I thought other people's schedules might have changed and you might have some unexpected free time today or different time because of the snow. What can you do with the time you have to make your life look, feel, and function better? There we go. Laura is, love it. I'm sitting down right now to get 25 items, specificity, Mwah. chef's chef's kiss, to take to the gem shop for commission. Yes, specificity. Right now, 25 items, taking them to somewhere. The specificity is going to help you. I love it. Rock on, lady. Let me know how it goes. All right. Um, the clutter, yep. The clutter is what gives me anxiety, so it's worth it to chunk it down. When you learn that chunking it down not just reduces your anxiety with, with clutter, but with freaking pretty much everything, you will have a tool in your toolkit 
to say, anytime I feel anxious, am I looking at this whole situation too big? Can I chunk it down? When I chunk it down, does it feel better? There we go. Okay. All right. You know what? Don't judge yourself. If you are a true hoarder, I will say this. I have all sorts of empathy for you. Um, hoarding at that level where they're doing a TV show is really a mental health situation. So that is best helped by people with mental health training. Now, I have some um, training as a decluttering life coach, but that's why I, I only work with people with a certain level of clutter because I know that past a certain point, you will get the results you want with somebody who is trained in mental health. I am not that person, but boy, can I help everybody before that gets to that hoarding situation. And it's worth discovering, okay? Um, okay, Lulu is saying, and this is about the, the sentimental stuff, I'm afraid, notice, fear. I am afraid without the stuff to remind me that I will forget the story. Enough said, my stuff tells me stories. They, I remember the stories because I see them. Couple of things to think about. Both Lulu and everybody who is having an issue with um, sentimental clutter. First of all, you don't have to get rid of a damn thing. Notice how that feels better when you say, I don't have to get rid of anything. You are in control and this is one of the reasons I coach on Zoom. I physically cannot get rid of something or make you get rid of anything. You make a decision, but make a decision that feels right to you. So ask yourself, does it tell you a good story? Does that story make you feel good? If so, consider keeping it. But if you keep it, ask yourself this, where does it go? Where is a place I want to display it or, or store it so that when I see it, I'm reminded of this story? If it doesn't tell you a good story, ask yourself while you're keeping it. And then also, Ask yourself this, is there another way I can remember the story without owning the item? There are different ways you can do that. You can take a picture, you can write down the story, you can do a video, you can write a song, listen to me, I'm on Mr. Microphone. There are different ways that you can remember things that don't have to be keeping stuff. Now I'm looking at around, I'm looking in this room. This is what we call our tiki room. When we moved in, it was the dining room, but we don't dine because we have a big kitchen. This is probably the, the room in the house that has the most little tchotchkes, little reminders. I have found a way that looks and feels and functions the way I want it to in here. Um, these things remind me of the good times when we've gone to a tiki bar, when we had an event somewhere, when we bought a piece of artwork. Um, feels good to me. Find a place to put your stuff that feels good to you too. Okay. There we go. Teresa Griffin is saying, I've had success in boxing with a label, tags, and date. Chef's kiss. A year later, easier to donate. Yeah, give yourself a chance to like the stuff that you, you know, keep the stuff you want, but also give yourself the opportunity to see, see how I feel with it in a, you know, um, in, a, in a year or so. All right. <laughs> there we go. I love it. Heidi D is saying the jeans I'm wearing today make me feel like Humpty Dumpty. Out they go too low of a rise. Yes. Things, the cuts of clothing, they change. Sometimes the low rise felt comfortable when we were too much, when, a, when the, like the, the waist went right up to here. And then at a certain point, that feels kind of floppy. So you want the waist to come up here. Clothing changes, our bodies change. Keep yourself comfortable. When you feel better, you're gonna do better. And it's not just feeling better up here, it's feeling better in here. It's feeling better down here. It's all the feels. When you feel better, you're gonna do better. So how can make it feel? There we go. All right, Sherry Hooper is saying, just came across you within a few minutes, I hit follow, I need this advice. Hun, I'm here to help you. Let me tell you about some of the other resources I have really quickly. First of all, I do these TikTok lives scheduled and occasionally pop up. This is a pop up. It started at 9.30, it's now 10.05 Eastern time. I will be here for another 25 minutes, but then because it's a pop up, I have other things to do. But I show up in your life to help you, to encourage you, to not discourage you that you can't do it, to encourage you that you can do this because you can. This is the great thing about decluttering. It is not rocket science. There are so many other things in the world that you can say I can't do, can't fix a car, can't you know tap dance. You can learn all these things. You can learn to declutter. So I'm here. There we go. Um, I also have recorded TikTok videos that I do often. And then also my TikTok lives that are recorded um, the, are uploaded to Destination Declutter on YouTube. There's also a free mailing list, destinationdecluttered.com slash join. Such a good place. Those people, if you're on it, you know, 
you get first dibs on all the good stuff. You find out when my TikTok lives are going to happen before everybody else. You get the sneak peek of the schedule if you want to have one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, which is yet another service I provide, <laughs> that you get the sneak preview of what the calendar looks like. So you get first dibs on my coaching slots because they are finite. You also get invited to a free Zoom call. Next week, we're going to have it on, Tuesday, on Wednesday night. Um, and that's another day that I'm doing two kind of TikTok y type things. So, welcome, Sherry. Welcome to the, the community. A bunch of nice people helping each other out, having a laugh. This is how we roll here, okay? What else do we have here? Um, I love it. Lulu's got three bags in the trunk to go and already have started rethinking the stuff. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Trust your judgment, Lulu. Trust your judgment. If you made your decisions out of fear, it might be a time for you to reconsider. But just sit there saying, what's the worst that could happen if I donate these items? What's the absolute worst thing that can happen? I might forget this story. Okay, how can I remember this story without getting rid of this thing? Or I may need this someday. I may need a rice cooker. I may want to use a rice cooker. Okay, if you donate your rice cooker, because notice I'm not saying Instapot because I finally donated ours. A rice cooker, is there another way for me to cook rice if I don't have a rice cooker? If I want to have something that's specific, do I have somebody I can borrow it from? Calming down your nervous system, the stuff that's like, but what if, what if? Shh, it's okay, it's okay. Notice how you feel when you feel better, when you feel safe and good in making your decision, things flow in and out of your life. I was gonna say like butter, but they just flow and it feels good, okay? So just notice that, okay? <laughs> All right. Um, Dragonflies and Flip Flops says, once I get out of my own way, I get in a decluttering groove. Just get out of my own way first. Here's the funny thing. I love that analogy because I want you to think of your life like a road trip and you are the driver in the car. The crazy thing is, is your car doesn't, you cannot drive forward when you are also the person who's standing in front of the car, stopping you from moving forward. It is all you, and I say this in the most encouraging way. If it were somebody else, then you couldn't change them, but boy, can you practice and experiment and do all sorts of things to change how you think, to change how you feel, and then to change what you do. And not just change all those things for the heck of it, but to change it strategically because these things will help you realize, get you to the life you wanna live, your destination. When I do this, it will make my home cleaner and or less cluttered. I will do this because I want to live in a less cluttered home. When I purchase this, you know, antique rattan set, it's going to make this room look like I want it to. When I get rid of this Instapot, I, it's because we don't use it. And it's going to feel better knowing it's going to go to somebody who does. You know? Um, Gnome saying, the interesting thing is too, is my sons yell, just throw it out, mom. They don't understand how hard it is. They do, but it doesn't have to be as hard. Also know that if they have been surrounded by clutter and things, they may not know the stories, but they see the result of how it feels being in clutter. Maybe their response to the cluttered situation is to just get rid of it. Maybe there is the minimalists and the maximalists and the clutterers and the people who don't have a lot. Everybody feels differently about the level of clutter and what to do with it. You, yes you, you, have to find a way of dealing with your stuff and clutter that feels right to you and helps you make the progress you want if you're not if your home doesn't look and feel and function like it does when it feels easier to you you are going to it's going to be easier for you to do it you don't feel good just throwing it away discuss with yourself okay if i know that that just throwing it away makes me feel not good. What's a way of getting these items out of my home in life that is a way that makes me feel better? Perhaps it is donating. Perhaps it is selling. Perhaps it is giving it to somebody. Perhaps it is, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Quizás, quizás, quizás. It's like an old like mambo song. Um, perhaps. You make the decision, but make the decision with your goal in mind, with the end in mind of being in a home that looks and feels like you want it to, and make a decision about 
how you're getting there feels good. Road trip, people. Think road trip, not commute. You're excited to get there. What are you going to do to get there and enjoy the drive? Okay, there we go. Jamie Dahl says, you are positively encouraging. Yes, I encourage positively because negativity just gets you stuck. I know first freaking hand because I spent decades of my life surrounded by negativity, thinking negatively, and boy, did my life show for it. When I started to get a glimmer of possibility and hope and encouragement to follow what I felt I wanted my life to be, boy, howdy, as Cream Magazine would say, boy, howdy, did my life change. It didn't change overnight. I wouldn't want it to change overnight. I like the incremental change because when cha things change at the pace that feels right to you, that's your nervous system resetting to a new level. That is the important part of sustainable growth is feeling good at whatever stage you're at and then pushing a little bit more. You can't go from lifting five pounds to lifting 50 pounds in the same reps. You grow into it, you get stronger and you expand your nervous system capacity for the new things incrementally. And it feels good and it feels the right way and then you push a little bit more, not too much, just the right amount for you and you feel good about the progress you're making while you're making it and you know that pushing a little bit just stretching 10 percent even better 10 percent even better and then the next thing you know you have gone from 5 to 50 but you've done it in a way that's sustainable and feels good while you're doing it while you're getting the results you want okay i love it just michelle says uh, my area has a buy nothing facebook group awesome and i love gifting things very cool okay um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Virtual Cat says, I'm a decluttering enthusiast married to a DNA hoarder. I'm learning to do it all things incrementally. When you are decluttering around and with other people, I am thinking of my dear, lovely, delightful husband in the other room. You have to do it at a time and a place that feels right to them. When he and I did, I was helping him with the decluttering of this one tote down the basement. We picked a time of the, we picked a day of the week in a time of day where it would feel doable to him. When you do that, when it feels better, you're gonna do better. It was easier for him to do it then. I know myself, I want us to continue on that progress because it's gonna be easier this next time. We already have those boxes that I showed you that have the, the, the categories on them. The boxes are still downstairs because he still hasn't sorted through, but we're gonna bring those up to the, to the kitchen and put them on the table again, bring another um, tote up and much of decluttering let me reassure you, it's lather, rinse, repeat. Once you know your categories, you can fit things into them. You can invent new ones. It's all up to you, okay? So, but doing it at a time of day, a day of the week and a time of day that feels good to you, game changer. Don't expect yourself to make decisions when your decision-making tank is empty, okay? Notice where you have more energy and focus. I am a morning person. I got up extra early this morning because I coach people. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, paid coaching. If you're interested in that, which I freaking love because it's the way to get you decluttered the quickest way that feels right to you instead of kind of having to pick up tips and tricks right here. It's directly 100% customized to you. That's why I love it so much. But I have a client that I coach at 6 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. I do that because that's the time it felt right to her. And so I show up then and I get an early start. That's why I'm able to have already coached multiple people this morning and show up um, and do a spontaneous TikTok live because I have energy in the morning. I know about myself that I start to wane sometime in the afternoon. So I schedule different things for the afternoon. I also know this about myself that in the evening, I have, especially if I've coached and consulted and done things all day, I am tired and spent. My tank is empty by the end of the day. So I don't force myself to do things that are going to be more difficult. I keep things simple at night. And then I wake up in the morning and do the same thing. Find out what works best for you. Okay? You know? And so notice that type of thing about yourself. Do not treat yourself like a machine. What works for some people may not work for other people. What works for me might not work for you. Find out what works for you and do things when you have the most, do the most difficult things at the time where you have the most focus. You may need to in the morning, you may not be a morning person, you may need to ease into it, and then around lunchtime is when you start to get in your groove. 
then ease into it with some simple stuff. Then when you're feeling better and more focused and awake, that's maybe when you can get into your groove about making decisions. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Irish Pink is saying 6 a.m. Wow, my brain isn't on until 10 a.m. Awesome. That's good to know. Then you can plan your life around where your brain shows up the best. We are all different. Um, I don't get up at six o'clock every day, but once I do, I you know wake up and I get myself going. So I am able to provide really good quality, helpful coaching at 6 a.m. 9 p.m., not so much. Now, what does that do? That causes me to perhaps not work with as many people that are in a different time zone than I am. But I know that... I may not be providing the best 100% service that I want to give as a coach if I show up in lesser energy. So I take that kind of financial hit, as it were, because I also know I want to show up in integrity and knowing I'm giving my 100% to my paying clients. So that's how I roll, and it's worked out so far. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Lori Hannah. She's coming in as like a, an unsolicited testimonial. Lori is saying, love my coaching sessions with Beth. She asks me the right questions in a kind way. Well, thank you. And you know what? This is what has worked for me. When somebody yells at me, I cry. When somebody is judgy, I shut down. When I'm being accused, I go into protection mode. That is self-preservation. That's how I'm wired. I know that I would cry if it was like that boot camp type style thing. I would not get the result I wanted in that kind of coaching situation. So I don't show up like that because I can't be the only person who doesn't like to be yelled at. Therefore, I don't yell. I don't. Kindness makes me feel better when I feel better and I'm curiosity and love. I have to share with you. It just feels better for me and it feels better for the people. I'm almost getting a little bit choked up right now, but I will share with you this weekend when I was helping my mother with her clutter. Now, for years, in, within the last three years, I pretty much spent a solid year going up to Massachusetts to help my mother with her clutter because she's lived in the same house for 50 plus years now. My dad passed away 10 plus years ago. She has been on her own and she's always been cluttered. So I had offered for many years to help her. She said no, and I respected that. At one point, a couple of summers ago, she said, yeah, you know, I think I could really use some help. Now, when I first got there, it was overwhelming and I was judgy and I was frustrated and angry, but I learned through helping with her that that made me feel lousy and it made her feel lousy. This weekend, I have gotten so much better at this from coaching and coaching myself. And I could legitimately say to my mother, cause she's apologizing and she's so, you know, I'm so sorry you have to come and do this. I wish I could do, she's beating herself up. I'm like, don't beat yourself up. I love you. I'm doing this because I love you. And this is something I'm good at. This is my language of love. I can help you with this. And when I could look my mother sincerely in the eye and say, mom, it's okay. You don't have to feel bad about this. I don't mind doing this. I could see the relief on her face that she was so afraid that I was frustrated and, and resentful secretly. And when I could just speak from my heart to my mother and say, it's okay, mom, I got this. I'm good at this. You're not. That's okay. You're good at other things. Let me help you with what I'm good at. And to feel that clean energy between us, and there was no subtext, it felt awesome. And I will tell you that it, I got so much done this week. We got so much done. I brought some stuff home with me because I did kind of run out of steam, but I'm going to go through some things, and I am making her life easier. And it has taken me a while to get there, but notice that your energy can make a difference. When somebody else is working with you, and when you are working with yourself, Treat yourself with kindness. Don't beat yourself up inside. Don't be a drill sergeant if that isn't what motivates you. Motivate yourself with kindness and love and encouragement. You've got this. You can do it a little bit of time like a little baby. You're not going to yell like a drill sergeant at a little kid just learning how to walk. No, you're going to be like, oh, that's awesome. You're going to congratulate them on the steps they took and laugh when they fell boom on their, on their little bums. And then they get back up again because they want to do it. The encouragement is how we progress as a human race. If you're always being yelled at, you're never going to get up. You're going to sit there and cry and be in a, in a poopy diaper, <laughs> you know? <laughs> there we go. Chris Starr, you, know, you need your life easier? Coaching can help you make your life easier. I am all about ease. I joke that, like, you know, that's that movie, All About Eve. I'm, jo I'm like, you know what? I'm going to write a book called All About Ease because it is so much easier to live a life of ease when your life is easier. I love problem solving and making things simple and easy. 
to re reduce the steps that make things difficult to get things where they're they're flowing in ease you know yes 100 percent. other people's energy can totally derail us and we can take that power back from them every time we take a little bit of power back from that situation it fades them out it brings the power back into us so we can notice where in the past people's energy has negatively affected us we can choose to do something different i have choose choosed listen to me i have chosen to show up as a coach on TikTok to my clients when i do this stuff in an energy that feels good to me because hopefully that will connect with you and you'll say wow there is somebody out there who can help me get unstuck and uncluttered and she's not going to judge me and she's not going to yell at me and I'm not going to feel shame and embarrassment and fear. Wow, that could be kind of cool. And it is. It is. I don't, you know, because to me, fame, sh fame shame, shame and fear and embarrassment and all that. I'm freaking Irish. I know all about the shame. You know what? It's a useless, it's a waste of energy. When you can stop that, and start to do something else, it's a game changer. Yeah. And Chris Starr is asking, how do I get coaching? Uh, f quickly, um, simply, actually, easily, because I like the ease, go to my website, destinationdeclutter.com. On my website, you will see a, um, a link that says, work with me. That page, it's probably, honestly, it's probably got too many words on it. I'm working on my text there. What I want you to look for is, first of all, if you think coaching is going to work for you, it will. Look for the big orange button that says schedule my consultation. What will that what that will do when you hit that button, a page will pop up that has a, 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 a calendar page. Now, I will share this about me, too, is my weeks look different every week. I have consistency with my clients, but even then I'm flexible with it. I travel. Things come up. So each week is about I schedule out consultation slots about a week out. So for this week, I have a number of consulta consultation slots. What's a consultation? Consultation is just you and me hopping on a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call for about an hour or so. You tell me what your clutter situation is. I say to you, my coaching can either help you or it can't. It usually does. If my coaching can help you, here's what it's like. Here's how much it costs. This is how long it goes. I want to answer all of your questions. I want it to feel good for you to say yes to paying for coaching. You say yes to paying for coaching, you pay for coaching, we start and we do a package of 10 sessions. And then if 10 is to just the just right amount for you and you feel good about what you're doing and how are you doing it, yay. If not, again, no big deal. I have clients right now that are that are signing up for their fourth and fifth amount of pack, package in a row because they're moving at a time and a space in what's going on in their life that feels right to them. We're also undoing decades worth of unhelpful thoughts and feelings and actions. So could you expect to lose a 200 or 300 pounds in, in a week? No, 10 weeks, no. You gotta do it at a pace that feels right to you. And that's how I roll. I coach like this, with love and curiosity and compassion and for you, so it feels right to you. So you continue showing up for yourself and then you practice showing up for yourself and doing the things that are gonna get your life looking and feeling and functioning better. Your home looking like you want it. The, um, Shell is asking about how long are the sessions. The sessions are an hour. We meet for an hour a week, once a week, for 10 weeks in a row. Then we can play with if you want it every other week or so. But the, the, the regular routine of showing up, reminding yourself to show up for yourself is beneficial because you're undoing a lot of unhelpful habits and you're starting some new habits and the practice. This is why if you took dancing lessons, you would practice between classes. This is why if you took guitar lessons, like the guy out there um, would, you know, take guitar lessons and practice between things. Practicing at a pace that feels right to you, making time to show up for yourself. Okay, so just notice that. And um, they're pretty much, you know, KDF is asking, what do those sessions look like? What they look like is you and me talking on, on Zoom saying pretty much, I, I figure as a coach, as your one-on-one -on -one coach, I'm a combination of things. I am part co-pilot. I have been on this road before. I have been between points A from cluttered to decluttered personally, and I have been the person in the passenger seat on this road trip from, declut from cluttered to decluttered with tons of people. So I know the terrain. I have a map. I know what happens at certain points. You don't know, so you're afraid 
you have me to trust. I got this. I know this is coming up. I knew this was going to happen. And I have a plan for what you were afraid of. We have a plan. We have a toolkit. You're afraid you're going to get a flat tire. We got a spare tire and a wrench. You get ran out of gas. Look, I got an extra thing of gas. I've been done this many times. So I know what to expect. I teach you how to do this yourself too, while you have supervision, while you have somebody there. And we work, we drive at a pace that feels right to you. We stop, we stretch, we, we don't just say declutter and nothing else. No, no, no sleep till Brooklyn or eastbound and down. You work at a pace that goods for you and you stop and you say, wait a minute, let me stop here and enjoy the, 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 the ride. Let me stop here and realize, wait, how did I get off my course? Let's stop and examine where, where we're going so we can do better moving forward. We create your destination. We champion your wins and where you get stuck is where I help you. And I create, we create together a toolkit that helps you to get unstuck when I'm not in a coaching session with you. So you learn how to do it for yourself and not just during the coaching, but for the rest of your effing life. Ta-da! And I love this because I never expect my, my clients, both past and present, and maybe you're a future client. I never expect them to show up on these TikTok lives, but I love it because Erin's showing up and saying rocking on. And ID Princess it says, Beth is a great coach. We are working together now. Very helpful. You know what? Right back at all of you. You are doing the best you can with what you have. But when you get more, you can do better. When you get more tips and tricks and strategies and ways of thinking and feeling that's going to change what you're doing. Okay. I just give you that as all information. Let that swirl around in your brain and let that swirl around in your body and just walk around your house today on this snow day in Pennsylvania and maybe where you are too and say, how would it feel to love how my house looked and field? field. I can't even talk anymore. Luckily, I'm only on for another two minutes. But walk around your house and I want to offer you this. If your home is not looking and feeling like you want it to, you can do something about it. If you don't know what to do, you can learn. You can learn from these TikTok lives that I do and you can learn even faster and quicker and get your home looking and feeling better before the spring and summer hits by signing up for one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. It sounds like a commercial, but it's a stone cold fact. If you want your home to look much better, much quicker, one-on-one -on -one coaching is the thing that's going to get you there, not just quicker, but in a way that feels right to you, that is sustainable, that works not just with your thoughts, but with your feelings and your schedule and how your life is. It works with you. It is customized to you so you get the um, results you want in a way that feels good. Okay? Now I have one minute left, so I'm going to wrap it up but I want to encourage you all. You have a short amount of time on this planet. The sooner you figure out what's bugging you and the sooner you take action when you discover that to say, I want to solve this, the more days and hours and months and years you have ahead of you that are going to feel better than they do now. So kind of do not delay, take action now. It's not just something that I'm going to buy, you know, send you a bunch of Ginsu knives. I mean this because none of us know what our future is going to be like. But if your, if your past and current now is not making you feel the way you want to feel, there is something you can do about it. And if it's decluttering coaching with me, I'm here to help you. Get onto my website, hit the button. If it feels right to you, schedule a consultation. We, we talk like this. And when it feels right and it feels like you can do it, it's going to be so much easier when you have somebody there so you're not doing it alone. Okay? All right, cool. Well, we've hit the 1030 mark. Again, I am Beth, Destination Decluttered, here on TikTok and on YouTube when the recordings have been uploaded and on Instagram and Facebook. That's basically just for the people who are not on YouTube on, on TikTok. If you're here on TikTok, consider um, following my page. Later tonight, I'm doing another TikTok Live that's actually scheduled. So when you know it's scheduled, you can show up for it. We're going to see how much my energy is. You know, I hopefully will have showered and maybe put on some chapstick, okay? But I am here for you to just, you guys, you can do this. And if it feels overwhelming and you don't know what to do when you're alone, whoosh, I'm here to help you. I love to help you. You just need to take the next step and get in touch with me to let you know, to let me know that we're going to show up on a consultation. But when it feels good, you're going to do good, okay? I'm going to go do some good stuff. 
for me in my life. I want you to do that too. And maybe I'll see some of you tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to do a TikTok live. It'll be from my office because that's where the scheduled one goes. But in the meantime, it was really fun to hang out with you. It was so fun to see a number of my current clients chiming in and encouraging the folks who might be a little bit wary of it, knowing that it's totally cool. It's totally, the water's, come on in, the water's fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, Smitten Kitten, thank you very much. Yep, tonight, 7 p.m. Definitely, I'll see you there. All right, Shell, I see the hearts. All right, folks, you go live a life you love. I'm going to do the same. I'll see you at 7, and we will congratulate ourselves on our wins. We will commiserate and problem solve our struggles, and we'll move forward. When you're feeling better, you do better. Okay. Bye. Bye. Can I hit the button? Bye. There it is. Bye.